Hey everyone, Mr. Fritz here, and uh, we are going to close up this video note series with a couple more examples. Uh, we're going to talk about parallelograms next. We've talked about lines, we've talked about circles, and now it just makes sense to talk about parallelograms. So let's do that. Uh, so um, a parallelogram, we have to remember, has two opposite side or two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel and the same length. So we're going to see how uh, vectors play into this in just a second. I want to show that ABCD is a parallelogram. I'm given all this information about these coordinates, A, B, C, and D. So let's, let's first plot A, B, C, and D. A is at negative 2, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, B is at 3, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1. Uh, C is 2, negative 1. And D is negative 3, 1, 2, 3, 3. All right, so if this is a parallelogram, um, let's recall what a parallelogram is. So if this is a parallelogram, then the things that are true is that the opposite, oops, the opposite sides are equal, and, and I, should, I should say are equal in length and direction. Hmm, interesting. Hopefully this is ringing some bells. When we say length and direction, hopefully you're thinking vectors, right? So if these are the same vectors, then they're equal in length and they have the same direction. So really what we're doing here, here is we're looking at pairs of vectors. So let's actually draw some vectors into this parallelogram. Uh, let's draw, oops, let's draw a pair of vectors uh, DA and CB. And let's draw, draw a pair of vectors a, B, and D, C. So if these colored pairs of vectors are the same, then it should be a parallelogram. So that's really what we're after here. So my first pair is, uh, is let's go with the blue pair. We want to know, for the first pair, uh, is vector D, A equal to vector C, B? How do we show that? Well, let's just find the components of both of these. So dA, vector dA is going to be given as, uh, I'm going to take my A values and subtract them from my D. So I'm going to take negative 2 minus negative 3, and I'm going to take uh, negative, oh, excuse me, 5 minus 3, and that comes out to be, one, two, those are my components. And for CB, vector CB, that's going to equal, uh, let's see, start with B. B is three minus C is two. B is one minus negative one. And hey, what do you know? It's the same thing, one, two. So check, these two are parallel. All right, let's take a look at the next pair. Uh, is vector AB equal to vector DC? If it is, we got ourselves a parallelogram. So let's check vector AB is going to equal, um, I, this time I'm going to actually just count. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, let's see, five, and then one, two, three, four, five, negative four are the components of vector AB, and vector DC is over one, two, three, four, five. So far, so good. Oh, this is big. And once I'm over five, do I go down four? One, two, three, four. Hey, what do you know? I go down four. So that means that vector AB is the same as vector DC. What does that mean? That means that a, B, C, D is a parallelogram. Hooray! It's a beautiful thing. Okay, so there's our parallelogram. I've got another example for you. I'd like you to try this uh, and pause the video and check the answers when you're ready. All right, it turns out whew, A, B, C, D was a parallelogram. I was getting nervous. Uh, will it always be? Well, no, not necessarily, and that's kind of why you need to go through the components. So hopefully that made some sense. 
In our final example, we are going to be solving vector equations. What I'd like to do is I'd like to find um, two scalar values, r and s, such that this equation is true. I want to add some number or some scalar multiple of this vector, 1, negative 1. Let's just kind of visualize this for a second. What this means is that I've got some vector that is 1, negative 1, let me try drawing that again. That's a little confusing. Over one and down one. Some vector that looks like this. That's this vector. And I've got some vector that looks like this. Over two, up five. And if I take these little pieces and I multiply, if I extend them, or if I even uh, make them negative and extend them, somehow I should add these together and get something that looks like negative 8, negative 20, this is like a, a massive vector down here. So hopefully you're seeing that uh, I'm going to probably have to make some some things negative here or I'm going to have to uh, do some stuff to kind of mix up these, these vectors. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Let's think about the, the algebra behind this. If I take uh, this r scalar and multiply it by 1, negative 1, really I can write the components as that scalar times my 1 my horizontal component, and then the scalar times negative one, my vertical component. And I want to add that to same thing with my next vector. I can just multiply that scalar times my horizontal and that scalar s times my vertical. And really at the end of the day I want this all to equal out to negative 8, negative 27. So this still might seem kind of like confusing or daunting, but here's the beauty of components. All of the horizontal components added up should equal the final horizontal component. All of the vertical components added up should equal the vertical resultant. So really I can kind of make like, make like two equations out of this. I have one equation with my horizontal pieces, r plus, uh, this is 2s equals negative 8, and I have another equation down here, negative r plus 5s equals negative 27. If this is looking like a system of equations, you're onto something. Uh, and what's nice about this is I can use elimination to get rid of these r's. I'm just going to add these up. That's kind of convenient. It's almost like I planned it that way. We're going to add these two equations. That's going to cancel out uh, my r's, and I have a 7s equals negative 35. Hey, this is nice. I divide by 7, I divide by 7. S is going to equal negative 5. So it turns out the scalar value is negative 5. And this, hopefully that kind of makes sense. I take this vector here and I'm going to lengthen it by a factor of 5 and I'm going to go in the opposite direction. That's kind of how it's going to get me down here. We have to find what this, uh, what this R scalar is though. So we're going to just plug it back in uh, to one of my original equations. So let's do that. Uh, so if r is negative 5, and I wanted uh, r plus 2 times my s, which is negative 5, equals negative 8. So r plus negative 10 equals negative 8. And it looks like that's going to make r equal to 2. So those are my two scalar values that makes this equation in component form true. Uh, you could check this by actually plugging in my r's and my s's uh, to verify it for yourself. But that's how I would get this final resultant, negative 8, negative 27. So now I have an example for you. Same type of deal. See if you can't find the r and s scalar values so that this is a true vector equation. Pause the video and check out the answer when you're ready. All right, so here's my work for this problem. Uh, hopefully you can follow along what I did here. I did have to manipulate this equation to solve using elimination, but you could use substitution. You could even graph this if you want. Um, and uh, hopefully you came out with these two scalar problems. So those are vectors in coordinate geometry. Really the same deal, just with points.